Hi, everybody. Before we get into our special 2 million download AMA episode, I wanted to update you on something that is happening very soon as of this upload. This episode is available on Monday, April 12th, 2021, and tomorrow, Tuesday, April 13th, 2021, something special is happening. LAist Mike Rowe is hosting their virtual TV pilot club event focused on the pilot of The Office and I'm going to be one of the panelists, along with comedian and writer Eliza Skinner and Tiff Arment, host of another Office podcast that I've listened to for a long time, Somehow I Manage. The free event will take place at 6.30 Pacific slash 8.30 Central slash 9.30 Eastern Time and should be a ton of fun. I'm really looking forward to talking about the Office in a different setting. A link to more info about the event is in the show notes, and I really hope to see you there. And one more thing. You'll be hearing more from Katie and I very soon. (laughs) Keep an eye out on our social feeds. And now, on to the AMA. Well, hello, everybody. (laughs) That's a sound I haven't heard in a while. Uh, it's it's good to hear. It. Well, not true because I, I I do go back and listen to old episodes sometimes for for nostalgia and to compare against uh, other podcasts that I listen to and see like did we talk about wow. that? Did we talk about that better? Maybe <laughs> who knows? <laughs> oh, starting with shade. Uh, uh, I'm not, I'm not after throwing a long any shade. <laughs> not throwing any shade. I, I I still listen to several or a few office podcast at the moment. And maybe that can be one of the things we talk about today is reviewing office podcasts that exist right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> at some point. I, I, I am not so good. I, my, my podcasting days um, ended about a year ago when the pandemic started because I don't leave the house. Yeah. So I don't listen to many podcasts anymore. But I also always had a hard time going back and listening to ours, mostly because I just hate hearing recorded speech of my own. Uh-huh. Um, but I I always did enjoy when I got over that listening to our old stuff. So I'll have to I'll have to do that more. <laughs> yeah, I, I I do particularly enjoy listening to like the the back half of ours. Not that I think our early ones were bad, but you can definitely tell we matured and growed into it as time went by. Yeah, and I'm a much better podcaster now than I was at the beginning of our show. And so it, it is nice to to listen back in that respect. Like oh I I do that a lot better now. But uh, anyways, yeah. yeah. It, we are here to celebrate because we, about a month ago, surpassed 2 million, 2 million total downloads of the podcast, which is absolutely insane. When, when I texted you, Katie, or messaged you on Twitter a few years ago, and I was like, hey, Katie, you want to do an office podcast with me? Did you think that these, these years later that we'd be talking about how 2 million people have listened to it? <laughs> this podcast has been nothing like what I thought. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it was like, to be honest, I thought it was like, cool, we'll crank out a few episodes. We'll see, you know, it might not be anything. I don't know. Yeah. And here we are years later celebrating 2 million downloads. I This is like my one piece of trivia when I meet someone like, oh, tell me about yourself. It's like, well... <laughs> Mm, check it out <laughs> I, I am a part of a really cool thing that i think we're both really proud of so if you're listening you're a part of it thank you so much this is crazy yeah it, it's crazy and we still get old listeners listening back and talking to us on our, our social media the twitter and all that um i don't remember who it was i'm gonna look it up real quick there was somebody who was like i've now listened through the entire podcast three times or something like that and i was like whoa that's crazy some people do that with the office Let's that makes see. me so happy yeah it was hmm. It was uh, Julian Farrier or Farrier. I don't know exactly uh, how to pronounce your last name, but I, I I knew it was one of our regulars, and he's been around for a while. And yeah, he he just finished for the third time and restarted from the beginning. On he's Julian, on his fourth listen through, and so like well, I, you know it better than we do at yeah. this point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just glad that there are. I mean, maybe maybe he's not the only one. Maybe there are other people who are sort of like now that. Now that we've finished and we're one of one of the only office podcasts, I'm not going to say the only one. I do think we were the first, but we're the, one of the only office podcasts to have completely covered the entire run of the show at this point. And so maybe for them, we are just as intertwined with their watch throughs uh, as as they they 
explore the show more. And so I think that's really special. And uh, I, I love that we are a part of everybody's office consumption at this point. Yeah, I'm, I'm always so curious um, for the people who are listening to us while they watch through for the first time. If you're one of those people, reach out because I'm just really curious what that experience is like. Yeah. I've never started a show and a podcast about it at the same time. I don't know how many of our listeners that is true for that that this is their first experience with the office. I'm just curious. Reach out. Tell me. Tell me what it's like. But um, regardless, if it's your third or your first time through, if it's more than your third. Really glad to have you. And my heart is so full at this moment. <laughs> we did have uh, somebody. We you know we ever, we launched a Facebook group. That's just for listeners of the podcast uh, to talk about the office. It's not like the most super active group uh, of all time, but we we do bring up discussions every once in a while and talk with each other. And there was somebody who was keeping us updated as she watched seasons eight and nine for the first time. And it, she might have been watching along from the very beginning for the first time. I'm not sure. But uh, mm-hmm. it was really cool to see somebody's reaction to the show and then hearing us sort of talk about our thoughts and feelings as, as they were exploring it for the first time. So anyways, we, we've been going on, on about that and we are here to offer some extra content <laughs> and uh, we were, ta- we were catching up a little bit. Is there anything that, that major that has happened with you, Katie, in the last year since we recorded our final bonus episode for this? Oh yeah. Traveled, saw the world's Ate in lots of restaurants and bars. No, I did none of that. But <laughs> I don't know. Working from home, got a puppy a couple, a couple like a month ago, six yeah. weeks ago, I guess. Yeah. So that's been a huge life change. Uh, loving, loving Miss Gemma, having her around. Um, otherwise, no, just still here in New York. That's it. <laughs> what about you, Chad? <laughs> well, I think you were starting a new job or, or about yes, to start a new job oh. right when we last recorded for this show. I. I think I was, um, I'm trying to remember what that was. Cause since then I've been promoted at that job. Ooh, um, fancy. So I, I don't know if it was, yeah, I guess I would have just started at the company, but yeah, I'm um, no longer doing the customer service side of that stuff, which I didn't particularly love. I now have a fun job as sort of a project manager uh, slash like systems designer for this company, uh-huh. um, which is pretty fun. And it's I don't have to get yelled at by customers anymore, which is my favorite part. Yeah, that that is a good upgrade. Yeah, uh, <laughs> way more meetings, le- uh, way fewer upset people. So yeah, <laughs> it's an improvement. Yeah, and a, a little bit more creative and stuff, which I definitely enjoy. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, I'm still at the same school. I'm still teaching middle school band. And uh, it's been a tough year because uh, yeah. try teaching people to play instruments when they're not in front of you. <laughs> it, it's challenging. And even the kids that we do have in person, we have our own, like, obviously, we have the safety issues of blowing air out into the world while we're trying yeah. to avoid spreading stuff in a pandemic. And we manage, we make it happen. We do a lot of cleaning, but we're doing okay. And we're getting close to the end of the school year, which is hard to believe that time has flown by so slowly and yet so quickly at the same time. But uh, it, it same old, same old. We're still teaching band and we're still making music. And so uh, that's a, a blessing in and of itself. I know we have a few musicians and music teachers and just people in the music industry who listen. And man, I think of you guys daily. Um, of course, <laughs> Chad and I have several music friends because we met in music school. So right. um, I just, I'm so, man, I I don't know how you guys do it. So <laughs> massive props. You all deserve a massive vacation when this is all over. I yeah. uh, cannot imagine. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it is nice to be sort of on the other side of the hill at this point. Obviously, COVID is still around and it's not going to go away necessarily anytime soon, but it has declined. And I am happily fully vaccinated at this point because I'm a teacher in Texas. And so that that's great. Yes, I am as well. Um, just because New York is like rolling them out pretty quickly at this point. So yeah. um, fully vaxxed, ready to, to watch those numbers keep going down. Yeah, and uh, I just joined our local community band, and so it's nice to be oh, able to fun. just play my instrument rather than having to teach kids how to do it. And so uh, I've been really enjoying that these past few weeks. Good. So we are here to do an AMA. We thought that might be a fun thing to do uh, to to celebrate the passage of time. 
And so we're just going to go ahead and get started. Uh, I'll start us off with our first question because it's from my cousin, <laughs> Summer, uh, who <laughs> has been a longtime supporter of the show. She was a Patreon supporter back when we had the Patreon. And I got to stop my cat from jumping on my desk. <laughs> okay. And she says, if you had to encompass what The Office is in one quote from the show for someone who has never seen or heard of it, what quote would it be? I have my answer. It's, um, you know, I feel like it's it's not a rare answer, but it's my answer and I'm sticking to it. Okay. Um, I, I think I know what your answer is going to be. So I, I'm yeah. curious. Said by Mr. Andy Bernard, right at the end of the series, I wish there was a way to know you're in the good old days before you've actually left them. And I don't think it necessarily wraps up the, like, tone of most of the show. I think most of the show is pretty irreverent and pretty, like, high, you know, I was gonna say high comedy, sorry. It's not high comedy. (laughs) It's, you know, very, just rough comedy, but it wraps up how you feel when you finish the show and Mm -hmm. the little moments day to day that you like witness these characters experiencing. So that's mine. Yeah. Yeah. That's not actually the one I thought you were going to go with, but I do like that that choice. I was thinking Pam's quote, very last voiceover of the whole show. She says, Mm -hmm. I thought it was weird when you picked us to make a documentary, but all in all, I think an ordinary paper company like Dunder Mifflin was a great subject for a documentary. There's a lot of beauty in ordinary things. Isn't that kind of the point? And again, that that, that doesn't highlight the the comedy of the show because obviously this is a butt gust uh, i said butt gustingly <laughs> uh, gut bustingly well. funny show in a lot of aspects in a lot of a, a lot of moments where it is just absolutely absurd but i one of the things that i had said in my mind when i i first wanted to make this podcast was that the office more than a lot of other shows i've watched that are build as comedies is more of a drama that is just very funny and that that's always what i've sort of held to and that's why one of the main points of our podcast was talking about character growth over time and so uh that that's the moment that i wanted to highlight and uh that that's the first quote that came to mind now there's probably a funnier quote out there (laughs) that might sum everything up Maybe maybe it's Michael talking in David uh, David Wallace's office where he says, sometimes I start a sentence and don't know where it's going. I just hope I find it along the way, <laughs> uh, like an improvisation. <laughs> yeah, which is a really apt <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah. definition of the show as a whole, because yeah. that's a lot of what they did anyways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Although if you, if you listen to the Office Ladies podcast, every single episode, so many people ask, was that? In, in improv was that an improv and the answer is actually usually no <laughs> yeah but uh yeah. still anyways that that was a long answer thank you summer for your question did you want to read the next one katie sure so from our friend sarah on twitter she says i'm so excited first of all thanks sarah what do you think of repeats in the office for example the michael scott in philadelphia um Number two, are there any characters that have grown on you over time that you've liked less each time you've watched The Office? Thanks. Love the podcast, Sarah. So, Sarah, to answer your questions, uh, first, I guess the the repeats. If you are referencing like the the Bob Odenkirk character when Pam interviews for that other job, I I think that's hilarious. And I think it kind of points that like there are a lot of crazy bosses and crazy co-workers and sane co-workers and oh this isn't just under mifflin this is everywhere and how normal everything kind of is just 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 like you said chad with her um one of her last quotes of the series it's a totally normal place it's a totally ordinary place and these totally ordinary places are everywhere which is kind of crazy to think about that something like michael scott could be more than one place (laughs) (laughs) 
Well, what's something something that's special about that particular example is and, and I'm going to just use my office podcast to talk about the other office podcasts that I listen to <laughs> because uh, Brian Baumgartner has the best office podcast right now. It's called The Office Deep Dive. Obviously, he had the oral history of The Office that came out last year, and this is the same thing, except it's all of the extended interviews he had with everybody. And one thing that they've talked about in talking about the early days of The Office is that the top choice, aside from Michael... Or, aside from Steve Carell to play Michael Scott was Bob Odenkirk. Like mm-hmm. he, Bob Odenkirk was very, very near being cast for this role. And Steve Carell ended up winning out. And so having Bob Odenkirk still come to sort of portray his version of the character who still is very much like Michael Scott, but still very Bob Odenkirk at the same time. It's cool that he had at least his moment to show us what it might've been. But I was also thinking the other day, I'm really glad Bob Odenkirk didn't get the job. Not because I don't think he would have been good at it, but because then he probably wouldn't have been been on Breaking Bad. We wouldn't have had Saul Goodman, and we wouldn't have Better Call Saul right. now. And Better Call Saul is one of the best shows on television right now. So I've heard that. It, I need to start yeah, watching. I've yeah, heard it's so good. It is so great. If you're a Breaking Bad fan at all, Better Call Saul is every bit as good as Breaking Bad. And that sounds like an insane thing to say, but it's absolutely true. Okay. It's on my list. It's yeah. on my list to go watch it. <laughs> Anyways, so number two was, uh, are there any characters that have grown on you over time or that you've liked less over time? I'm going to say something that I think is going to get me in trouble. A lot of people. Scandalous. Uh, And I may have said it before, but I'm going to (laughs) say it again. Um, I have never been the biggest Kevin fan. Mm -hmm. I don't know why. I just, uh, mm, I appreciate Brian Baumgartner. I think he's I think he does the character super well. He's mm-hmm. super funny. But just Kevin stuff, like the whole chili thing, <laughs> not, a, not barely a peep. Barely. Yeah. Like, I'm, it, I'm just, I don't know. But I don't know that I've grown to like him less over time. You just never got the appeal? I just never, yeah. I, I, I was never really on the Kevin train. Watching through, yeah. Yeah, I guess he's my answer. I was going to say to like more i was gonna say holly because at first she kind of bugged me but then i was gonna say at the end of it even through my first watch through i mean you love holly i think right i think you have to um so that's that's not a real answer that's just (laughs) i remember not not being very like come on what's what's so special and i think that's part of the part of the beauty of the writing of her character anyway is it's like it was just someone so ordinary and even in HR <laughs> right. that, that he found. But yeah, Kevin's my answer. I'm so sorry. <laughs> well, I, I can't think of any like specific answers to this question. I think maybe characters that I've liked more over time. Honestly, D'Angelo Vickers. I, I, I was mm. not a Will Ferrell fan for a very long time. Uh, I just didn't care much for his style of comedy, but over time, I, I've been exposed to more of his work, and I've appreciated him more as an actor. And I think his stint as D'Angelo Vickers uh, is hilarious. I think he's really funny. The the invisible juggling scene that's mm-hmm. that's so funny, so funny. And so him, I mean, I've always liked Robert California. I guess I, I, there's not anybody who was like. And I don't really like them very much. And then I've changed my mind over time. But something I guess that that was highlighted while we talked about the show more in depth was how much I disliked character actions and personalities mm-hmm. during certain points of the show. Like the one that stands out in my mind right now is Angela. There was a moment in our watch through when we were talking about it on the podcast where I was like, Oh my gosh, I, I really, really dislike Angela right now, but it's not because she was a bad character or anything. It's just because she wasn't a very likable person. She did some terrible things. She was cheating on two people at the same time. I like, There was a lot to dislike. And so those things stood out to me more when I was watching it with a more critical eye, but it wasn't because I liked Angela Kinsey less or anything like that. Right. That, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, I think every character had moments where they just weren't their best and that's totally realistic. I think there are several Phyllis moments where my eyebrows are pretty raised. (laughs) Yeah. Um, you know, she she has a little dark side, stuff like that. That's totally yeah. That makes a lot of sense. And I mean, obviously, there's the whole Andy Bernard and season nine crap, but <laughs> right. But but that's, I mean, it's, it's it's its own thing, and I like Andy separate from that. So, right. It is what it is. Yeah. 
Anyway, speaking of our friend Julian on Twitter, he also asked a question. He says, how do you guys think The Office is on Peacock's interface, along with all of the, quote, new content that's been added, curated playlists and such? And reading this question, I'm reminded that I told Julian I would do the homework and explore The Office on Peacock, but <laughs> I have not done that. I will oh, be honest. Okay. Have, have you? Uh, a bit. I pretty much have only watched The Office and Parks and Rec on peacock i haven't delved too much into their content besides i think they have maybe one season of extended cuts of like the super fan episodes Uh of the office which are great those are a lot of fun go watch those um there's a couple of minutes each episode of of cut material the peacock platform as a whole is fine i don't love silly things like the the navigation menu i have so maybe it's just me, but I have a hard time telling which episode I'm hovering on, like uh-huh. which one is am I, am I about to play? I don't know. I, I use it because I'm not always going to go get my DVDs and put them in my DVD player that I still have and <laughs> watch that. So Peacock is definitely easier, but I don't know. I think, you know, it's, it's still new. I think they may revamp. I hope they re- revamp, you know, mm-hmm. in, in maybe a few months or so once they get some good feedback. but. I'm glad it's streaming somewhere because I think that's important. I mean, at this point, I do own the DVDs. Obviously, that's what we use to talk about the show for the podcast, and I own it digitally as uh, as well on my Apple TV on my on like through iTunes. And I have not explored it on Peacock. I'll, I'll confess that I haven't watched a whole lot of The Office in general since finishing the show. We dove so deep for so long that it was just like, let's explore other TV for a little while. And mm-hmm. I'll, I'll watch it if somebody else has it on, or I'll check out an episode here and there. And there will be a time when I'm like, okay, it's time for my annual rewatches of The Office to recommence. But right. I, I'm not one of those fans who needs to watch it like on a loop. And I mean, no judgment right. on those kind of people, but I, I like enjoying a wide breadth of TV. And uh, I try to explore as much of it as I can with the time that I have. And that means that the things that I have already seen, I don't tend to rewatch very many times. Um, yeah. So especially after such a critical view of it. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. I, I, I used to watch it fairly on loop, but I was also watching it pretty casually and kind mm-hmm. of in the background or whatever. So if I watch it now, when I watch it now, I do watch it, but it's it's background or casual viewing. Yeah. Because, yeah, we did spend a few years diving pretty hard into it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it's not like I like The Office less now that we've done the show. It's just it's it's. It's it's already pretty deep in my my mind, and so I don't right. necessarily need to rewatch it for a while. So, anyways, but it'll come. Yeah, it'll come, and I will definitely be excited to check out some of those super fan episodes on Peacock. And it has been funny to see how Peacock has like marketed all of their various tiers on uh, around how much of the office you want access to. <laughs> right, it, that's sort of the defining feature of yeah of their like subscription model. <laughs> yeah. In our AAW podcast, The Office Talk Facebook group, uh, which Chad mentioned earlier, Eddie says, here's one I've thought about. Let's say there's a 10-year reunion show with the cast. If you were writing the show, what would some of the main characters be up to 10 years after the finale? Hmm. That's a good question. Um, Really good. And we are approaching the 10-year reunion show. Now, I, I think we've said, or I've said on the show before, that if if there were to be more The Office one day, I would prefer it to be like an occasional one-off special rather than mm-hmm. a, a an actual revival series. I think that would fit it better, and you'd be able to get more of the cast back that way. No. I mean, I guess we could just talk about like groups of characters in general. Like, Where do you think you'd see Pam and Jim and kids at, at this point? Would they still be Definitely in Austin? Definitely still in Austin. Yeah. yeah. I, th- I think Jim and Athlete really... Athlete. <laughs> Athleep. Sorry. Yes. Athleep. <laughs> the name got worse. Um, I bet the name has changed, but I bet <laughs> it is doing really well. I bet they are loving Texas, loving the... I kind of feel like they'll feel younger in Texas Mm -hmm. because they mentioned the nightlife in Austin and the the music. And I think they mentioned the food and um, I don't know. They seemed fairly kind of they hit their their normal patterns in Scranton. And I think a shakeup would do them well. So um, 
yeah, and I guess the kids would be, you know, 12 and 10 ish. I don't know, 11 and 13, something like that. Yeah. Um, wow. So busy <laughs> and preteen mayhem. So, yeah. What do you think? I, I agree with that. Um, let, let's maybe talk about some other characters. What about like Dwight and Angela? Do you think Dwight would still be at Dunder Mifflin? Do you think he loves the job that much that eight years later, nine years later, he'd still be there? Or but maybe even a better question. Do you think Dunder Mifflin would still have survived this long? Uh, <laughs> I think it would have downsized a large amount. Um, I yeah. can't, I mean, I'm, I'm not in an industry where we out, like, where we buy paper from a company that like a small paper uh-huh. company, but I can't imagine there being many branches of Dunder Mifflin. Yeah. Yeah. I, I bet they have one or two offices in 10 years because <laughs> the whole episode they're talking, or sorry, the, the, the whole series are talking about the decline. Um, yeah. episode one, they're talking about the decline of Dunder Mifflin. So in an increasingly online world, no, I don't think they're doing very well. <laughs> yeah, probably not. So, I mean, if Dunder Mifflin's still around, probably Dwight's still there. Angela maybe working, maybe just raising the kids. I, I think that Dwight might like that for her. Um, mm-hmm. And I think she would probably be happy doing that. How are Michael and Holly, of course? Oh, I think they're doing fantastic. Maybe even have another kid or two. I don't know. Yeah. How How many? <laughs> <laughs> well, we I don't even know officially how many they had at the end of the series, do we? No. It's, yeah. He said kids. They yeah, were so I would assume like two or three at that point. Yeah. And so maybe maybe one or two more? Maybe? I mean, yeah. Michael always wanted kids. I mean, think back to Fundle Bundle. <laughs> he said he, he, he'd want 100, 100 kids so that he'd have 100 friends and nobody could say no to being his friend. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Michael he ended in a happier place than that, though. He did. He did. And yeah. just a few kids will, will cut it for him, I think. He doesn't need yeah. 100. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I, th- I think they're they're happy. And I like to think of Michael and Holly as being like the ultimate soccer parents. And, you know, like they're at every event that their kids are going through and super, yeah. super involved in, in a good way, not in the helicopter way. No, like they go hard for soccer games. Like yeah. they, they face paint. Yeah. Put on the wigs. I was thinking yeah, face like- paint. <laughs> I'm, so, I'm, I'm glad you said that. They go big. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I mean, I guess other characters, Kevin would probably still have his bar. Oscar probably did get voted into, what was it, city council he was running for? Or state? No, he was running for state senator. State because senate. Because that was the state joke. Senate, yeah. 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 Do you think he got that? Yeah, I, I, think so. I, I think so. I think so. And maybe at this point, he'd be willing or ready to move up to normal senator, like in the Congress. <laughs> A U.S. senator. Yeah, like not a state senator. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, uh, and Creed is still Creed. Still still kicking and definitely still hiding. (laughs) (laughs) Okay, my friend Rachel, who went to school with us as well, and I was in band with her. Uh, she said, congrats, Chad and Katie. Thank you, Rachel. She said, if y'all were to write a, quote, dramatic love story for a less central character... Creed, Gabe, Gil, Hot Warehouse Guy, etc. Who would it be and what would be the plot? Any immediate ideas coming to mind? I definitely have the character. I don't have the plot. Um, <laughs> Are you going to say character. Nate? I am going to say Nate, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I love Nate. Is that, is that yours too? Uh, I no, but I, 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 as soon as you said I have a character, I was like, I oh, think it's going to be Nate. And I was like, yes. I love Nate. I, I think I agree. Uh, I would love to have more Nate. More Nate, the better. I just want like a series of first dates or like, uh, uh, oh, speed 10 years dating. later, he's on a dating app. Yeah, yeah. And then yeah. like his, his, his bio is just, I don't technically have a hearing problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 100%. Um, I want like a spinoff with him and his dating craziness. And there's, you know, he eventually finds the one who is like, I don't know. I could see him with like an Aaron type in a way, but not Aaron, yeah. just that, that yeah. trope. So yeah, I just, I just want to see him happy. He's, he's my buddy. Yeah. I just want to see yeah, him. Yeah. I would like that. Yeah. Nate is our choice. <laughs> yeah. Big Nate guys here. Okay. This next one is long. I'll go ahead and take this one too. Okay. 
This is from our friend Michael, who is an orchestra director. He said, hello, I was hoping to submit a question. I'm an orchestra band music appreciation teacher in Iowa. He's planning a unit on podcasting where students will discuss their favorite music in the form of a podcast. They're going to use Audacity to record, which is a free software in case any of you need a free audio editing software. I was wondering if you could discuss your equipment slash software used, how much time and effort that goes into recording and editing, how you decided on the structure of your discussions or anything else you would prioritize about the logistics of producing a podcast. Okay, that, that's a lot. And I'm going to try and not go on for too long. And you're free to jump in as well, Katie. <laughs> this is um, mostly a Chad question, though. So, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, to, to, to start with the, the beginning of it, to decide on the structure of the discussions. I mean, I have been podcasting now, uh, technically since 2013, well, since 2013, really, but technically longer than that. Cause I was doing my own audio editing for various other adventures before that. And so when it came around time to do this show, I'd been doing Cinescope for a year at that point, And I'd been on my friend TJ's show. I was a co-host on that for about 50 episodes, Movie Bite. And so it was just like, okay, I like this part of our podcast. I don't like this part of our podcast. I like this part. I don't like this part. And so it was just like picking and choosing the things that I liked best about how we put the show together. And then the, the actual like content came from just what the the show is what what the office is it was like okay well obviously i already said my theory about this being a, a very funny drama i wanted to focus on the character discussion and so we we talked about the non-funny stuff first and then we talked about the funny stuff because it is a comedy and then our special thing on our show was we're going to talk about the bonus stuff too that people don't get on netflix and so that that's where the the structure came from and it, it was just like an organic like what makes sense when talking about the show from the perspective Perspective we're approaching it from. And it, it did adjust and sort of settle into something maybe slightly different from what we originally set out to do at the beginning. Mm-hmm. But I, I, I was happy with what, what, what we ended up doing as far as structure for the show goes. And the other, other things should be a little bit quicker to answer, I think. The software, I I use a software called Logic Pro. It is a more like professional software. I had it installed on my Mac when I first got it several years ago i'd learned how to use it in college actually we had a class where we had to use like music technology and stuff and so that's where i learned to use it and uh that's what i use but audacity is what i used for a very long time before that and it is perfectly fine for editing software or editing audio um and katie do you still use audacity to record when we do these i do yeah Uh, i think i first started out with just quicktime um yeah and quicktime was installed for free on like most computers it was just fine um it's a easy way to start out very simple to use audacity looks a little scarier but it's not complicated um Mm -hmm. at least not as complicated as some audio equipment can be i could figure it out so it's not (laughs) that bad and um oh let's see mics and things I use a Samson mic right now. Um, Chad actually started me out with a with a nice gift of a snowball. It was a blue snowball mic, which was really great. That that one worked well as well. Um, we have the the screen, the oh gosh, what's it called? The spit guard. Pop filter. Mm-hmm. And a pair of good headphones. Yeah, I mean, as far as microphones go, any microphone is better than no microphone. Uh, you just don't want to use the built-in one on your laptop. And so, like, you can get a Blue Snowball, which is a, a decent mic, for 30 to $50 in that range somewhere. The Blue Yeti is a, another popular one that's a little bit higher end, and that one's about 100 to 120 And if it's something... I, I mean, obviously, you're doing these for your students, and so you're probably not going to be upgrading to anything specific but since you asked i do i did eventually upgrade considering this is a long-term hobby for me and i'm currently using a heil pr40 microphone and i think it's somewhere in the like 300 to 400 dollar range but again this is a a long-term long-term hobby that i've been doing for a long time and so it made sense to upgrade to something nicer and uh if there's anything else that we left off or that you would like to have more specifics on uh hit me up on twitter i'm happy to answer more questions there but that that should get you started okay next we have joel from twitter he says, what do you miss most since wrapping up the podcast? Is there another show both of you are into that you might do a podcast on? What do you miss most since wrapping it up? 
Uh, well, we don't talk as much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's probably the main thing, uh, to be honest. I mean, and it was nice to have regularity with this show. Mm-hmm. Like, it was like, well, we know. But with Cinescope, I love Cinescope. It, it's one of my favorite podcasts that I've been a part of. But there has to be so much behind the scenes of that one it's like i have to find a guest and work out a schedule and they pick a movie or i pick a movie for them and we have to watch the movie like it's so non-regular and with this it was like well we're talking about an episode of the the tv show and so the next episode we're going to talk about the next episode of the tv show and so it was really easy to know what was coming up next and so it was nice to have that sort of structure and it was like okay most of the time we're going to record on tuesdays we're going to record every tuesday at this time or this time and it, it just worked really well and i miss that but really I miss talking to Katie all the time. <laughs> I know. Yeah, that that is that's my answer as well. I also yeah. miss the interactions with the listeners. We oh, yes. I mean, we definitely still get, you know, tweets and messages and and um an email now and then, but it was obviously much more regular when we were putting out regular episodes and asking yeah. you all questions. So, say hi, we're still here. Yeah. But I I definitely miss like the the handful of people that we'd hear from pretty regularly every mm-hmm. few episodes we'd we'd get an email from from someone i think some people even messaged almost every episode um so that was a lot of fun yeah and for the second question uh you ask is there another show both of you are into that you might do a podcast on well this isn't exactly answering your question but i have started a podcast on another show since finishing this one and it was one that i had started working on even before we wrapped this And it just took a long time to sort of get off the ground. But I've got a show called Crossroads of Destiny now, where we are talking about every episode of Avatar The Last Airbender, the Nickelodeon animated show from our childhood that is amazing. And we're going to be talking about all of that and all the the comics and Legend of Korra and whatever comes out of Avatar Studios that Nickelodeon just announced, which is pretty cool. And so there's that. Now, as far as like Katie and I both... There's always been like people asking about like Parks and Rec or Superstore since Superstore just finished. Um, yeah. Or, I mean, any other show. And we've never said no, but for sure the answer is not right now. <laughs> we've never said no. We've never said yes. Yeah. It very well may happen at some point in the future. Life is weird and busy and whatnot right now. Um, we need to both agree wholeheartedly on the show. And I think when we have talked about this in the past, it was like, yeah, eh, mm, I like that show fine. Or I've never seen it. I don't really want to do a podcast yeah. on it, on something I don't know that I'll like. So if the time comes, because when, when Chad originally asked me to do this, he knew I was a big fan of The Office. I knew he was a big fan of The Office. It just was pretty organic and made a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. If the right thing came along, yeah, totally. Until then, I don't want to push it by doing something that we're not both crazy about you know yeah yeah and i mean maybe the big thing to ask would be if there was some sort of office reunion to come out or office revival i mean i don't want to speak for you i'd like to think that we do something for that yeah. if, even if it's not like a regular weekly show again i'm sure we'd have something to come i mean obviously yeah. we're here a year later a year and a half later from actually wrapping the show and we're still talking and we're still posting on yeah. this feed so i mean there's there's always possibilities. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. It would be weird for us, I think, to to not mention in some kind of revival or some kind of check-in um, yeah. if it came out. So Yeah, I think we'd have to do something in some capacity, even if it's not a regular show again. Yeah. Joel also asked, this time on Facebook, he asked on Twitter the last questions, and this one's on Facebook. Uh, what's your favorite drink at Dunkin' slash Starbucks? And I, I will answer both if you want to go ahead and go first. <laughs> Love this question. <laughs> I am pretty much a iced coffee with milk girl, which I can't say that now without thinking of a comedian, Nate Bargatze. If, you, if you've seen him, you know the joke. But yes, it's very funny. Um, Chad, go watch him if you haven't. But okay. iced, coffee, iced coffee with milk. <laughs> and I, I could be happy with that pretty much everywhere. Starbucks, I don't visit too often. So I don't really know my drink there. Probably just like a cappuccino if I don't get an iced coffee with milk. But yeah. But I'm also not one of those people that would get an iced coffee in January. Yeah, yeah. I'm. It's a hot coffee with milk. But um, 
yeah that's that's the preferred though is iced yeah so if i go to duncan i just get a extra large black coffee hot most of the time unless it's summer or i'm just like in the mood for something cooler or more refreshing in which case i'll get an iced coffee but I don't put cream or sugar in it, but I'll get a little bit of blueberry flavoring in it sometimes, or I'll just drink it black. Blueberry and coffee, don't knock it till you try it. It mixes surprisingly well. Uh, they complement each that other. that was one of the first times we talked was I <laughs> accidentally gave you a blueberry coffee. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember that. You gave it me a pumpkin coffee. It was one of the, the K-Cups or whatever. Yeah. Yes, and I thought it was blueberry tea, um, <laughs> and it was blueberry coffee. And it wow, was weird and good. Past. I, yeah, it was good and weird, and now I kind of want some. Yeah, I mean, I, I like it at Duncan during the summer months, especially. It's really refreshing. At Starbucks, I will be honest, I really don't like Starbucks coffee that much. Um, yeah. If I get something, I'll get like a Pike Place and kind of grimace through it. <laughs> yeah. um, it has to be pretty hot for me to actually like it. Now, I'll get their nitro cold brew sometimes. Again, just black, and that one's okay while it's cold. And aside from that, uh, the only specialty drink I really get at Starbucks is maybe every once in a blue moon a pumpkin spice latte, but not really. The The real answer would be a gingerbread latte, which they don't sell anymore in the United States. And so, yeah, that sucks. But the real, real, real answer is brew your coffee at home because it's better. Yeah, it is. It is better. <laughs> I really don't go to... Duncan or Starbucks anymore much. Yeah. I'm spoiled rotten. My husband is a project manager at a very bougie coffee shop, coffee Ooh. chain here in New York. So he brings home the pastries. He brings home the good coffee beans. When mm-hmm. we go out, we go there, we get coffee. Uh, it's mm-hmm. very good. So that's my, that's my favorite now. <laughs> I've got a fresh coffee subscription. And so I get whole beans shipped to me fresh, freshly roasted every few weeks. And so much uh, better. I grind it and brew it at home. And yeah. that's, that's the real answer. So thanks for that, Joel. <laughs> I, we are clearly passionate coffee people. We're coffee people. I, yeah. I, he said K cup before I don't want to put like to put the wrong image in your head. I have graduated. We have a nice <laughs> oh, burr grinder here. at home. Like that was college. Please forgive yeah. me. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, <laughs> my parents and grandparents still have K-cup machines. I will that's what I use at work because I I don't want to ha- have to hassle with uh, equipment and stuff. Uh yeah. but as soon as I get home and I'm I I'm drinking the good stuff. So. Yeah. We got the pour over. We've we we got there. We grew. Yeah. Up. Yep, yep. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next I have Bonsai from Facebook. He says, "What do you think would happen if the office has an episode about this pandemic? What would the characters do?" Great. Question. And I actually saw a TikTok, actually, about <laughs> this exact thing after I saw this question. So very, <laughs> very appropriate. Recently, appropriate. But I don't have a very good answer. I think Michael would be insufferable if he was still working at Dunder Mifflin. <laughs> I guess I can't really answer it that way because he's not. But if yeah. he was. You think he's unproductive during the day in person. Try video chat. <laughs> this would just be horrible. I don't know. Creed would never be there. Kevin wouldn't know to, to mute himself. Phyllis wouldn't know to mute herself. Mostly it would just people not being able to mute themselves. Yeah, they, they wouldn't know how to run the technology. I, I've seen a couple memes on like facebook office groups about like how certain characters would react and i mostly not agreed with them like some people would say that dwight would be one of the ones against wearing a mask and i'm like he'd absolutely wear a mask dwight would absolutely be one of the ones wearing a mask i think so too Uh, i think if there was a character who didn't it would be like ryan yes yeah yes so dwight might be anti-vaccine but i don't think he's anti-mask yeah Uh, yeah maybe not even i don't know yeah i don't know yeah, it's hard. It, it's hard imagining them. I'm imagining them like in the setting that we know them from. So obviously right. time has passed, but pretend time hasn't. They're in the office and pandemic happens. So maybe this is this is 2012 and it's the swine flu. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I, I think the things you already listed are pretty spot on. Uh, Michael would just be like, never turn on his camera or he'd like fall asleep behind the meat and he'd have people yelling at him over the meat and (laughs) 
I feel like yeah. Pam would wear like three masks. I don't know why, but she would be like the <laughs> hand sanitizer queen. She she would have prepared. Kelly would have all the designer masks. Yeah. Oh yeah. Aaron yeah. would do something funny. I, I don't know. Yeah. Meredith's face mask would be disposable, and she'd have worn in the same one for like a week or two. Several. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. her at home attire is not office appropriate. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Jim is like zooming in from a beach somewhere, but he like built a little office behind him. So it looks like he's not on vacation. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's Anyways, it. <laughs> <laughs> Rob on Facebook asks, what was in the Margaritaville box at Michael's table during the garage sale? I've never gotten an answer. And as a Jimmy Buffett fan, I need to know, is it the Margaritaville blender? I might have to like go look at this real quick. Obviously, we didn't do like a ton of preparation aside from assembling the questions. I am I'm googling it right now. I always kind of assumed, I mean, if I see a Margaritaville branded thing, I just assume it's the blender. I didn't even know that like there was Oh, it makes sense. There's a blender. Never mind. Yeah, I would assume it's the Margaritaville blender. Like that that would be my impulse guess. Like Michael buying like as seen on TV products and that seems like something that would be right up his alley and he probably used it like one time if that yeah and i'm i'm, I'm having a hard time even finding a photo of it I yeah could go i think i'd have to watch the episode, episode but, to find it yeah Aha. yeah but that was my thought when you when, when i read the question i was like yeah i think it's the blunder so i think it's the blunder <laughs> mm-hmm. okay there's the official answer yeah you heard it here uh we've got dan <laughs> from facebook i'd be curious to hear both of your takes on overall favorite storylines in the show and if you can think of any little goofs that stood out to you since rewatching the show multiple times hmm favorite so what's your favorite storyline line? i know um, my answer okay you go first uh my answer for favorite storyline just like general arc of the show is i love the michael scott paper company Mm, I love it. It, it, I love seeing Pam and Michael working together and growing off of each other and even how Ryan sort of fits into their little group and seeing them, them struggle, but ultimately succeed and then fail and then succeed again. And then they come out of it closer. I I really like that arc. And yeah, that's, that's the one I immediately point to. That's a really good one. Mm -hmm. I have like five different little moments in my head. Initial thoughts were kind of Jim and Pam in the dating years, year, (laughs) Mm -hmm. finding out they're pregnant, like that, that era is just really sweet. Yes, obviously, like the proposal is magical and perfect, but Mm -hmm. just that whole like snapshot in time of them getting everything that they've ever wanted. And it's, it, it all happens so quickly, even before the, the wedding is just the sense of relief in Jim, like, finally, I, I, I got what I had been hoping for for so long. As far as the office, like, on the comedy side, which, you know, it is. And it's also <laughs> a drama. But it's, you know, I hate that I love, actually, like, Ryan's whole rise to power and fall from power. <laughs> yeah. I think it's really just, it feels good <laughs> when he when he fails. <laughs> which is wrong and bad, but it just feels so good. <laughs> when you see him at the bowling alley you know it's like yeah with the frosted feels, tips yeah it just feels like <laughs> justice um and i, I quite like that <laughs> yeah i mean as far as like an arc for characters michael and holly and seeing how michael is automatically improved as soon as holly enters his life and he starts trying to court her and date her and eventually marry her and yeah they have the the big gap in the middle where she has to go back to nashua and michael dates helene at that point and he dates donna at that point and that's a huge step backwards but then holly comes back and he makes those huge strides in being a better person i love that yeah so definitely some good ones yeah and uh what about any goofs do, do, can you think of any goofs or like mistakes or anything that stand out hmm well there's like errors in the show things like that um i never loved the whole i mean i i understand and i don't even really want to say it because it's like such an easy thing but the recasting of pam's mom is always like <laughs> uh, eh. They, yeah, but they well, always, even Andy's an parents show. are recast. Andy's parents, that's another yeah. one. Yeah, that kind of thing. 
I do think the show was pretty good about avoiding that stuff overall. Like they had a cast of characters that stuck around. I mean, if, and of course, season one, you have mysterious people in the background. You're, <laughs> they, they didn't know, you know. They, yeah, I they think her name is Luann, they were be. The, the one lady that yes. you keep seeing all the way through. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. For the first three or four seasons. That sounds familiar. And it's, yeah, it's a long time. Mm -hmm. It's much longer than, than you think. That's really all I can think of. I feel like the show is really good about avoiding mistakes. Like it's not even a mistake, just, you know, glitches like that. Mm -hmm. And there, I mean, there are like tiny inconsistencies that just happen from developing characters over time, but nothing that really stands out. So I'd be curious, Dan, if you have any that stand out to you. Shatter the glass. I want to know. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> okay and we did ask for voicemails and we did get one so we're going to play this email or this voicemail from uh jesus hi guys it's uh jesus from uh mexico so i want to congratulate you on the two million downloads i hope everything is going well with you and uh, i actually have a question for you uh, a couple of friends and I are uh, thinking of launching a podcast we've been uh, talking about it for about a month <laughs> And we didn't know uh, all the work that can uh, lead to it. So I wanted to ask you guys if you have any advice for us, like uh, maybe uh, where we could start, uh, I don't know, equipment we could need. Uh, Just uh, we don't know where to start. Uh, I think that would be a... Great to to get uh, advice from you. You've had uh, so much success. Thank you, and uh, have a great week. Okay, so we've kind of talked about this a little bit. Thank you, Jesus, for the voicemail. But to to sort of just distill it down into just a few simple steps, come up with an idea that you're passionate about. Find people who are passionate about, about that idea with you so that you know that they'll stick through it with you when maybe it's tedious, like for the first couple months that or first several months, Katie and I did this show. It's not like we had a whole bunch of listeners. We just got lucky one day and all of a sudden there were tons of listeners and I don't know how it happened, but uh, it did. And so don't go into it expecting to, to gain a huge following. I will say that this show has well eclipsed <laughs> the Cinescope or any other project I've been a part of. Uh, th- this show has been an anomaly. Uh, but anyways, just go into something that you're passionate about and do it because you're passionate about it, not for any other reason. Podcasting is not something you're going to make a lot of money from because none of us are Joe Rogan. And once you have decided on the project and the people and you're passionate, then get a microphone. Doesn't have to be an expensive one. Get a $20 microphone. A microphone is good. Any microphone. And record yourselves and polish it, make it sound good, and post it and share it with people. And that that's that's the gist. That's the gist. And listen to yourself. I, yes, I, listen I, to yourself. I, I said before how much I hate doing it, but it helps you start to recognize. And I, you know, we haven't recorded in a long time, so I'm sure I've fallen back into bad habits of you knows and ums and likes and <laughs> the the filler words that when you don't quite know what to say next, fill up your speech. Uh, which is there was one just then. I, uh, <laughs> and you 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 don't know that you're doing that stuff until you listen. And you kind of hate it, and then you you become more aware of it, and you stop doing it. So get through it, listen through it, and you'll start to to tighten up those spaces where it's just a little too lax. Yeah, the only way to get better at something is to do it multiple times and to continue doing it. And for podcasting, for sure, listening to yourself and editing yourself. I can tell you so many of my friends' filler words and habits when talking in a microphone. And it comes from taking the time to to make it sound good. So yeah. Again, if you have any other questions, Jesus, feel free to reach out and I can ask more specific or answer more specific things to what you're looking for. So I uh, just thought we'd include that since it was a voicemail and it was the only one we, rece- we received and that's okay. But yeah, there's that. And uh, Katie, do you want to read the last thing that we have on our list? Yeah, a lovely note from Peter on Facebook. He says, I don't really have a question, but would just like to, again, recognize you guys for doing the best Office rewatch podcast out there by a long margin. Thank you so much, Peter. He says, I'm one of those people who can genuinely say that The Office changed my life for the better, and your podcast was a piece of that change, too. So thanks. Ooh, thank you, Peter. (laughs) 
really, really, really kind words. I think this definitely goes without saying, but we picked a show that has a massive fan base because we are part of that massive fan base. Right. It wouldn't be anywhere without you guys and the massive fan base. (laughs) So (laughs) it's popular for a reason. It's a very good show. And we're just two fans who wanted to talk about it more because there wasn't a bunch out there in the podcast world about it yet. So really, really glad that you're a listener. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you very much, Peter. As Katie said, we we would have been recording this podcast. like We were making this podcast before we got a whole bunch of listeners, and we would have been making this podcast even if we hadn't gotten a whole bunch of listeners because we enjoyed talking to each other, and we enjoyed talking about this show that was really special to us and sharing it with other people. And so we're glad that it's not only special to us, it's special to all of you, and we're glad to have had a part in whatever change for the, for the better that the show made for you. So thank you once again, Peter. And I think that pretty much sums everything up everybody. We have been talking for a little while now, and that's been really nice. We always went into episodes saying, oh, this one's probably not going to be very long. <laughs> and <laughs> and really an hour long. and a half later, <laughs> we come out the other side. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. we can talk. We're, we're, we're chatty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Old habits die hard. And so in any case, what I have to offer you there is a hearty... <laughs> scared the crap out of me i'm sorry (laughs) it was a little louder than i expected it's good no it's good yeah i needed a little wake Um, up amazing it's good to hear that again it's been a while since i got to the end of the show so (laughs) yeah so yeah that's that's it everybody katie do you want to update everybody where they can find you and anything else you want to share oh it's a good question I changed some of my tags when I got married, so I don't even know. You go first. I'll look mine up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, the the best, like the end all be all for me is Twitter. That's my favorite social media and the place where you should add me if you want to interact with me. And that's at Chadadada. That is C-H-A-D-A-D-A-D-A. And the, the show's podcast is still active as well. We retweet things. We post things sometimes. We talk to people who talk to us. Uh, and that's at Workplace Pod on Twitter as well. Well, and uh, those are the main two things. And if you wanted to listen to my other shows I, that I've mentioned today, there's Cinescope, the Cinescope podcast, which is a movie discussion show where we talk about the movies we love and why we love them. And so, even in the last year, Katie has been on that show. It was our first time on a microphone then, after a long time, and obviously, it's been even longer up to now. But uh, we talked about Inside Out last year, and so you can listen to that. That's at Cinescope Pod on Twitter, or you can go to the Cinescope Podcast.com. And then my other show that I mentioned that is new and doesn't have like a regular posting schedule because I'm recording it with my best friends and they have two very young children. And so we, we record sort of sporadically, but uh, we're talking about every episode of Avatar, the last airbender and all of its associated properties. And you can find that at X roads pod on Twitter and X roads pod.com. And it's called crossroads of destiny. And uh, I think that's it. So Katie, you ready? I'm ready. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> basically it's just twitter you can find me at ktlady623 on twitter really dumb tag but that's it not on twitter as much these days i don't know why instagram is fine too katie roden r-h-o-d-e-n one nine on instagram but i you know i i get messages and stuff on twitter too so i don't know yeah. not not a ton of social media these days but message me i will get it i will respond <laughs> It's funny. I remember you changed your Twitter handle at some point and I, I was like, why. Katie, Katie, you can't do that because <laughs> I don't know the new handle and I knew the old one oh, and I've got to be able even, to tag you. I don't even remember my old one. I, it's, mm, I think yeah. it, did it have my last name before? I don't remember. Well, it's been KT Lady six two three for a while, but you changed it at some I point. I it. think, okay. like maybe after you got married, and then I was like, Katie, this isn't going to work. That's, I, I think that's why <laughs> I changed, changed it back. It I back. was like, wait, we did years of a podcast. I could never change it. <laughs> that's why I couldn't remember it. Okay, yeah. yeah. Well, that's a saga we didn't need, but that's that's yeah. where you can find me. <laughs> so this episode has been pretty pretty cool. <laughs> and <laughs> it was nice to once again talk with Katie for a while and talk about The Office. And we're always talking about The Office. You can always, like like I said, just go to Twitter. Go to Twitter. That's the cool place. And it's also a cesspool. But the more people talk about The Office, the less of a cesspool it is. So go do that. You're not wrong. It, it is. And we can make it better. So join us there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for a lot of reasons. But this time for the 2 million downloads.
We are so thankful. Again, we never thought that it would be this big. That's what she said. Uh, <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah, I did not has to purposely be set myself up for that one, but I realized halfway <laughs> through, I was you. like, I've got the moment. There it is. <laughs> so. Oh, amazing. Well, thank you all. As Chad said, really means a lot. <laughs> I don't have a cool soundboard to throw sounds on, but uh, I do still mean it. Hope to chat with you all soon. We're around. Hit us up. Okay. That's it, everybody. Thank you. Talk to you all later and goodbye. Bye. No, God! No, God, please, no! 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 Okay. (laughs) (laughs) This isn't, like, the main podcast or anything, but I just want to make sure. Is your recording software using your normal microphone and everything? It is using... um... Yeah, normal microphone, the the nice one. Okay, I wasn't sure. Skype one. doesn't sound like it necessarily is, but I can understand you fine, so that's not a problem. Um, weird. I played back my audio, and it sounds good. Okay, I mean, you sound Input, like I said. Yeah. Like you're you're uh, tell intel. No, you're tell. I can understand you. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Tucker, cool. I'm gonna kick you out if you keep making sounds. Gotta be a quiet cat. Yep. He's jumping around. It's like a playground. This is a room he's not normally allowed in unless I'm in it, so. Ah. So it's playtime. Yeah. And I just got home from work, so. He needs all the attention. Yeah, Nathan is unfortunate. Well, I'm not going to say unfortunately, but Gemma, you know, I work from home. Nathan does not. Uh So when nathan comes home it's like playtime i'm i'm the the strict parent unfortunately (laughs) i'm the no one okay let's see nope you don't get to come over here thank you